grubby pumpkins and mushrooms from Dollar Tree for primitive fall home decor? Yes, please. Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. So when I went to Dollar Tree recently, I noticed that they had all different kinds of pumpkins, sizes, shapes, and uh, ones that even clip like these right here. So I grabbed up a bunch that I could find and I went to town. I also found a little package of mushrooms that I showed you there. That's something new that I've never seen and those are the cutest. Wait till you see how cute they're going to be all grubbied up with a little bit of Spanish moss. They're just going to be primitive perfect. You're going to love it. Uh, these little, or they're actually big pumpkins. I grabbed a few different shapes. There's the tall, skinny, and then there's the round, kind of uh, chunky-ish one. And I just grabbed a bunch of different ones of those. And I'm going to start with a layer of Mod Podge. Now I use Mod Podge matte. That's just what I prefer because when I seal things, I like it to be a matte finish. Uh, but uh, you get the glossy or whatever you choose that you want to use. But I like this matte and I just painted it on my pumpkin all over. I tried to make sure I had a nice good coat on there. Now this brown stuff that I'm putting on is grubby mix that I make up myself. You could use cinnamon as well. I like the darkness of this one that I mix up and it also has some coffee in it and it just has lots of texture to it because of the grounds of coffee. The uh, different, I have cinnamon in it, I have apple spice, uh, cloves, I have whole cloves in it. Uh, that's a lot for, the whole cloves are more for like a the smell, but I just put that all on and make sure that it's covered. And now I'm going to show you, I'm just using my Rust-Oleum Matte uh, Clear spray that I have. And I sprayed my little pumpkin to see how that would work. I've been told that that works pretty well. And it does work pretty well. It actually sticks to it, but it dries so stinking fast that I had to go out, I think, four times. I had to go out and spray it so that I had it sticky enough for the... Uh, the, the spice mix here to, to stick to it. So I do have a video on how I make this spice mix. I'll link that down in the description and also I'll link it in the comment at the top of the comment section. I have these little clip-on uh, pumpkins that are really cute on their own, but I want to get these grubbied up because I like them to look primitive. And with fall coming and Halloween coming, I think they're going to look really cute for both. So again, I coat it all with Mod Podge and then I'm going to just bathe it in my spice mixture and then I tap it off. I tap my hand to tap it off because if you actually tap the pumpkin, sometimes you touch it and the stuff will come off. Uh, if it's not dry yet, which it's not. So so there, that guy's done. And I'll do all the rest of those. And now I'm going to work on the mushrooms. These guys, I've never seen them before. And I could not wait to get my hands on them as soon as I saw them. They are just the cutest. So uh, again, Mod Podge, a good coat. You're just painting that on there. And I did a little bit up underneath. You're not going to be able to see it, but I just thought it would make it look nice and finished just in case if somebody didn't want to go through this whole process that I'm doing. If you wanted to cover the top and just leave it the way it is, then you could do that. So I did go up underneath the little top of the mushroom. Uh, and then I'm also going to put the spice mix up under there as well. Now you do want to make sure that you have something to set your pieces on while they dry. I have a piece of wax paper that I set them on so that they can't stick to it. Uh, and the, you know, the spice mix or grubby mix will stick and peel off. So I like to use that or even one of those flat tins that you can get from Dollar Tree. I let all my pieces, once I had them coated, dry for about 30 minutes 
and that makes it so uh, the spices stick really well. You can go in right after you spice them up or grungy them up and start right in if you want to. You just got to make sure that you do what I'm doing here and you just kind of tamp the Mod Podge on. So this is going to seal in. So Mod Podge, when it dries, it dries clear. So this will seal that, that spice mix onto whatever that you're spicing up or grungying up and it will dry clear and you'll be able to see that. It will have a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's more of a matte sheen than if you were to use the gloss, it would be highly, highly glossy. So I just kind of, uh, I show you a few times here on a few different things. See how I just tamp on uh, that Mod Podge. Uh, you, if you go straight into brushing, it doesn't always, it's not always stuck well and you could brush it right off. So, and then when you do brush it back, you wanna do it gently and it, it should work really well, especially if you let it sit and dry for a little while they it's already dried on there and this just helps seal it in i do a lot of selling in my booth and on etsy and i just whenever i ship or i know people are going to be handling things that's why i seal them because it just makes it easier and you don't have a bunch of spice mix falling off all of your pieces and have big bald spots on them from people touching them or from shipping just things moving around in shipment so that's one of the reasons why i uh, make sure I put a seal coat on it. I also like the look of it when it dries. It gives it a nice dark look. And so that makes it look even more primitive to me. So I like to do that. Now this is the pumpkin that I used the clear, wa the uh, not clear wax, the clear uh, spray on. And I took that outside and sprayed it to seal it on instead of using the Mod Podge. Now I'm showing you here what the look is. It looks more like it originally did when I put it on. It didn't change the color very much. It didn't darken it up. And I really like that way too. And it actually sticks really well. Now I'm using some Craft Smart, I believe it's called. I got this from Michaels. It's a color khaki. So it's like a brownish gray color. And I'm putting that at the bottom of my mushroom. So the little base of that is going to be this color and um, covering up whatever grubby mix I got on the base. And I just give that one coat. It doesn't need much because I will be going in with some antique wax and darkening that up and just aging it. So it doesn't matter if it's not uh, completely covered. It does a pretty good job of covering it. Of course, you could use any color that you want. I just had this one and I thought it matched well. So... Um, going in and doing that. And I don't worry about getting too far up under the cap of the mushroom. I'm going to be adding Spanish moss to that, so uh, that'll cover that up. Now I'm just heating or uh, drying this up with my heat gun, and the first time I did this, I realized that as I'm doing it, it's getting kind of these bubbles, these bumps, and it's shriveling a little bit, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this looks so much like a mushroom. And so uh, it's kind of like a foam material and it's squishy. So it just kind of melts a little bit. And uh, it reminds me of those foam or those mats that the kids play on when they tumble, like in tumbling class. It's all I can think of to explain it. There's a real spongy type material. So I'm just using my heat gun and I'm, I'm heating it up and I'm letting that paint bubble and I'm letting it bring melt a little bit and bringing back some of that underneath uh, color. It's fine. And as you can see there, I've got a little paint on the cap, but that will be covered up with my uh, antique wax, so it's not a big deal. So I did the same with that. I painted it, I heated it with the gun, and that just shriveled it up and kind of made it look, I think, even more like a mushroom. So I'm taking a little bit of the antique wax straight out of the bottle and I am going to wipe it right on to the base of the mushroom. And I'm just darkening up that paint a little bit, making it look a little grubby. And then I go ahead and wipe it back. And I'm gonna hit it again with the heat gun. And as you can see, the paint's bubbling and it's fine. Um, and I'm just drying that up really good. 
Now before I finish, I'm going to heat the bottom of that up and then I'm gonna push it down onto the table or you could find a flat area, whatever you have. And I'm trying to make the bottom flat. It's kind of rounded and it doesn't stand up very well. And I want the option, as you can see here, to be able to stand it up if I want to. It's still a little topsy-turvy because, you know, those caps are pretty big. But it does stand, so it's pretty cool. So you just heat that up and soften it and just push it down. And I had to keep playing with it, but eventually, uh, you know, you get them where you want them and some will fall and some will stand. So now I'm going to take my heat gun and some Spanish moss, like I explained earlier, and I'm just going to tuck it in around and up under that cap of the mushroom just to make it even more primitive and just make it look whimsical and fun. I took some scissors and tr gave it a little haircut and trimmed some of the Spanish moss. Not too, too much because I still want it to be a little wild and stick out and be crazy, but just to give it a little bit of a haircut. So now I'm going to take my bigger pumpkins and do the same with those. Take some Spanish moss and go around the stem of the pumpkin. Now you could take these stems out. I've seen a lot of people use uh, cinnamon sticks and sticks from the woods and uh, all kinds of different things to make stems, but I thought these looked just fine for my primitive look of my pumpkins. I didn't even bother to paint them. I do have some that I painted black, but honestly, it doesn't really, it looks good both ways, and I like how the Spanish moss looks around the stem. I think it looks really cool. So I did the tops of the one that I had used the matte spray on, and then I did the top of this one that I had grubbied with the, or sealed with the Mod Podge. So I put that on there and glued it down really well. Then I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of uh, little flat, I guess they're flowers from, I, I got these from Dollar Tree. And I liked the color of the flowers. They were kind of a natural, neutral color. And I thought they would look really nice uh, on the pumpkins. Of course, you could go with a more yellow uh, sunflower look if you wanted to. Daisies, not daisies, but uh, Black Eyed Susans or something like that, which they have at Dollar Tree as well. But I like these, and so I took the flowers off. I just cut the little tips off them and glued three of them on. And then I grabbed three of the leaves and put those in random spots around the flowers. And I thought it just gave it a nice look. It wasn't, it didn't stand out really, really uh, flashy or anything. It's just a kind of nice neutral look to it. I want to make some tags for my bigger pumpkins so I grabbed my little wooden tags that I have and I'm going to take some of the antique wax and use that as a stain and stain up my little tags. Now I think I've done this before and then I tried to do transfers and it didn't work very well and I guess I didn't learn my lesson because I bought another pack <laughs> of rub-on transfers and they're beautiful. I just love the colors in them and I think they'll go really well with my pumpkins. But they did not transfer well onto my uh, little wooden tags and I think it was because I waxed it. And I've done this before and, and uh, it didn't work very well. I did get it to work on a couple of them and it came out okay. So uh, I just need to caution you that if you are to do something like this, maybe, I don't even know, uh, you know, I guess I wouldn't use the wax first. I'm not really sure how you would do that differently, but um, 
maybe use paint instead, or I think I've seen people do uh, the wax and then they take Mod Podge and put a layer of Mod Podge on and let that dry. Then once it's dry, then you can use your transfer. I haven't tried that, but I do need to because I have a bunch of tags that I want to make for my pumpkins. And uh, it's just not working with the way that I had it. This one did work. I'm not really sure what I did differently with this one, except that I pushed down really, really hard. And you shouldn't have to push down that hard. Uh, you do need to add some pressure, but really they almost stick on their own. So I'm pretty sure it was because of the wax. So I had just tied a string on there and I'm just gonna pop it right onto my stem on my pumpkin. And there we go, that one is done so cute and I love these transfers mm -hmm. now I did this one this little short one as well but I took some of my raffia and ripped it up and made it just kind of look like hay I guess on the top along with my Spanish moss and just spread it out and I added a little tag to that and that came out really cute just giving you some options on what you could do if you didn't want to do the little flowers or something like that, or you could leave it just with the Spanish moss on it, or you could just leave it plain. Now I have these little clip-on uh, pumpkins that I grubbied and added some Spanish moss to, and I wanted to make kind of like a garland with some of my jute rope that I have. So I'm gonna also take some of my homespun material and just a, a small spare piece that I had, and I'm gonna rip it up and make five little pieces. Now you could add more to this if you wanted to. I was just gonna show how you could easily make a cute little garland with these little clip pumpkins and uh, some just scrap material that you have and a little jute rope. <laughs> so I just kind of strung this up so I could show you a little easier how I wanted to do this. So it has a little clip on the back and sometimes when you're grubbying and you're using your Mod Podge, it will glue the clip closed. But if you just put pressure, it, it will open a couple of them that happened to me. So they opened finally. It was not a big problem. Now I'm just going to tie, just, just tie a piece of material on next to it and then go a little further down. And I'm going to clip another little pumpkin. This is a really easy little garland. Very simple, but it would really dress up a little vignette that you had so nicely, or you could hang it, you know, add some more material, add more pumpkins, and hang it from your fireplace or wherever you like to decorate, uh, your coffee bar, your um, anything like that. Just clipped them on and then just added the material and here are the finished products. I hope you guys enjoyed my grubby pumpkins today. And boy, those mushrooms were a surprise, weren't they? I really think they came out so cute. These will be for sale in my Etsy shop and the link will be down in the description and also linked or pinned to the comment section at the very top. If you enjoy this content, please like, share and subscribe and have a great day.